You've tuned in to another edition of The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications director, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the different city departments and provides updates on current and upcoming projects and events. And now your host, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to catch up this week on what's happening in and around the city, and more broadly, we're going to break out into the county and talk about mosquitoes, mosquito control, and what you need to know to keep those pesky little pests from multiplying. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Director for the City of St. Augustine. This week, joining me in the break room, I have Anastasia Mosquito Control District Commissioner Trish the Commish Becker, as well as Eddie Zazeko, St. John's County's Mosquito Education Specialist. Trish and Eddie, welcome to the break room. Hi, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Trish, welcome back. Um, We've had you in a few times, but it is that time of year and we want to talk about mosquitoes. They are out in force and it's important that we remind our listeners that while you cannot necessarily control the human population in St. John's County, we can make a difference in controlling the mosquito population. So... Let's talk about that. That's right. And within the summertime, now we're getting all these storms lately. So we really want to be vigilant and make sure we prevent any outbreaks of mosquito diseases. So around our houses, we'd like to check out for any standing water in your water planters, in any kind of uh, filled up gutters, anything around your house that can hold water. Make sure you're dumping that out. So you're not growing your own problems. Right. Um, Even things like um, your lid on your garbage can that might get turned upside down and is sitting off to the side. Yeah. Maybe you're changing out a wheelbarrow wheel and you've left the spare on the side of the house. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Tires are a big one. That is definitely for sure. Uh, Our team just picked up about 200 tires out in Armstrong. Um, So that was, you know, millions of mosquitoes that could have been breeding out of those. Uh, we like to tell the public that it just takes one water bottle cap full in five days to grow 200 mosquitoes. Rip so, a bottle cap full? A bottle cap. Just a, like a, a soda bottle cap that you could buy at the store. Okay. That's it. Uh, that's all these serial killers need. And she can get out there and m- make hundreds of babies to come and get us. So. And mosquitoes do hurt people. They I mean, do. They're... they're the number one killer of humans since humans have been on this planet. So... It's It's not COVID. It's mosquitoes. Well, last year it was COVID, but every other year it's mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Almost a million deaths a year and millions more that have lifelong uh, illnesses and trauma. And you're talking about things that hold water. We even have plants out there that hold water that you really try to discourage, even though they're pretty. We do, especially bromeliads. Uh, On the last time uh, I came here, we talked about the mosquito hotels. And so... (laughs) You do want to stay vigilant and just make sure to spray those out once a week with a hose or even make a little um, solution with dish soap. That way it's a little bit slippery so their eggs can't stick to the plant. How how would I make that? Put it in a spray bottle? In a spray bottle, yeah. Just put, um, you know, a few droplets of the soap and fill it up with water and spray down the plant. And so, because okay. each one of those can hold about an ounce of water, each one of the bromelia um, leaves. So if I, I don't necessarily know how to, there's no sprays out there than what I put in my body in terms of bug spray, but we have a program in the county that you can actually contact your office or the Mosquito Control District and they'll come out and spray. Yeah. So Mosquito Control is paid for with your property taxes. So you pay for year round treatment and service. So anytime you have a problem, you want to make sure to go to www.amcd sjc.org and put in for a free service request. One of our amazing technicians will be out as soon as possible and they will inspect your yard, see what's happening, and then if needed, they'll treat it. And so anytime that you have problems with mosquitoes, they will be out. If it takes 50 times, they'll be out 50 times. Okay. And you'll never get a bill for it because you do in your uh, yearly property tax. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about the, the trucks and the sprays. I know people get very upset and concerned. Um, what can you tell us about how that works in terms of what's in it? Just that, that when I hear about the spraying and the truck is going to be in my neighborhood. Well, f- 
first and foremost, we are all environmentalists. We love this place and we love being outdoors and we like being able to breathe in clean air. So we're definitely not going to be spraying anything dangerous on ourselves, right. let alone anyone else. Um, so when we do spraying, that's for when there's some sort of outbreak, when we have more than a certain number of homes in one area. And so what we do is we spray at night because that's when mosquitoes are active. They're active at sunrise and sunset. And all of our other friends like bees are sleeping. So mm -hmm. they're all inside and they won't be bothered by the spray that we use. Uh, when we come around to some of the uh, gutter areas and ditches and stuff, we use an organic um, larvicide. And that way, you know, it comes from the dirt. It doesn't hurt anything else. So but, that's only if there, like you just mentioned, that's really only if there's an increased population of it or an outbreak or something in a concentrated area. That's not a, that's not a routine process necessarily? No. And we have traps set out all over the county where we'll put out uh, 40 traps in an area on a Monday. We pick them up on a Tuesday. Our team will hand pick through them with tweezers and count how many we have. So we know we can predict by the numbers uh, if there's going to be an outbreak soon if there's more mosquitoes than usual, and then we can start taking steps to get rid of the problem before it happens. Uh, is, Eddie, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so there's a threshold with those traps. So if, if a trap in an area catches 25 or more mosquitoes, then we know to treat that area. Okay. So there's measurable yeah. process out there to know when something's coming. Yep. Everything we do has to be justified. We're not just out there spraying willy-nilly. Everything we do is justified with factual information about what's going on. Data. Yep. If you are just now tuning in, you are listening to The Break Room. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Director for the City of St. Augustine. In studio this week, we have Trish the Commish Becker. She is our Anastasia Mosquito Control District Commissioner, uh, one of several. And uh, we also have Eddie Zizeko in studio with us. He is our Education Specialist. Switching gears a little bit to talk about education. When you say education, what does that mean? So it means I'm trying to provide the citizens of St. John's County with information on how to prevent mosquitoes from breeding and bites, you know, what threats they can pose to humans and actions you can take to uh, not get any diseases. And, and you are, but you've you been in going into the schools, although some of that shifted a little bit with COVID. Talk yes. about, can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, so um, before COVID, I would be in schools uh, conducting labs with kids, teaching them you know, where mosquitoes breed. I would hatch some eggs with them to show them how fast they can go from larva to adult. They would be able to see the life cycle. Um, we would do labs um, with mosquito fish to instill, like, um, the scientific method. And then I would lead into that, to the control side of it. Like, I would get them all excited about the fun stuff right. and then lead into the control side, why it's important that what we do, what we do. And, yeah. So... Ahead, well, I was just going to add in on top of that is he works very closely with the STEM, um, the head of the STEM teachers. And so we have specific curriculums that each grade level uh, needs to learn about, uh, you know, say like the scientific method. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what grade it is. He can talk about it and give the exact kind of uh, curriculum that they're looking for in that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. All lessons are tailored to the Sunshine State standards. Excellent. And but just to talk a little bit, we do have a facility um, you guys had an open house back in the spring, I want to say. Um, April. Out in the... Was that April? I, I know you guys were April giving out masks. And you came. Thank I you did. so much yeah. for coming. It was really fascinating. And I'll tell you, my son did a science project, did the whole... Um, the, put the spray on the socks and counted the mosquitoes when you guys were out at your old site. But seeing... One of the things that really fascinated me was the fish in the water display at how they eat the larvae or eat... Mm -hmm. it, can you explain that a little bit since I've just said it, but I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. So those are our <laughs> gambusia fish that we breed on site. And so any place that has a um, like a pond in your yard or even a, a lot of the farms that have like the water troughs for the horses, mm -hmm. we put fish in there because anytime there's just standing water, they can grow. So these fish love to eat the eggs, the mosquito eggs that are floating on top of the water. So if you don't have constant movement in the water, then they can grow. So our ponds and our subdivisions a lot of times will have fountains and that keeps mosquitoes from okay. mosquito eggs from growing. Um, and so the fish can be a helper with that. Now, if I have a little standing water pond or something, can I get fish from you? Yes, and they're free. So I just call you and you I say, just call, us, call and us and you bring it out. Yep. 
And I never thought about the fountains as being more than anything ornamental, but maybe part of it is somewhat scientific as well. Yeah. Well, the so can you tell us a little bit about the facility, about the learn? I know it's still Yeah, so evolving. we're going to have, um, it's going to be a vector control educational center. And so this is going to be really fantastic opportunity for people of all ages in all kinds of areas and different science and education to come. So we're not only going to be talking about mosquitoes, but we're going to be talking about vectors in general. And that's any kind of illness that you can get from um, a bug. So okay. we're going to talk about bed bugs. We're going to talk about fleas and ticks and we're going to have live uh, fire ants. We're going to have a live hive of bees. We're going to have all kinds of different things that's not just focused on mosquitoes, but of course we are going to talk about mosquitoes. Sure. And so we'll have live setups where you kind of walk through, you can mm -hmm. see an example of a standard house and what could grow mosquitoes around your home. You'll walk through a, spot, um, a swamp area and then okay. you'll walk in and see a big insectary. And so that's where we're going to be able to further continue our research processes that we do. But this, uh, re this insectary is going to be full glass paint. So when we get field trips and students come, they can actually see real scientists doing the work, you know, and getting inspired. And that's what we really want is because we need more people in the science field. We need to to be able to finally win this war against these mosquitoes. And so we're going to be talking about um, military. We're going to be talking about past mosquito control, future mosquito control. And it's going to be a really cool thing. They've started working on it before I was even elected in 2018. And we've been saving money just to build this. So there's not going to be any further tax um, right. burdens on the people. What's interesting that you talk about, too, is we come and talk about mosquitoes, but you're right. There's so many things that are unique to the region of the country that we live in and fire ants and ticks and the other types of bugs you're talking about. Um, it isn't just mosquitoes, but it's stuff that we all need to be aware of. If we go walking on a trail or we have a yard or we move into a new house and you're clearing out debris, yard debris, or after the storms, you mentioned the storms, knowing how to, it's not just about, clearing out the limbs, but keeping that water out of, you know, that standing water, um, knowing what you're looking for in terms of other bugs. and. Yeah, you know. our, our main goal for the education center is to instill good practices to prevent disease transmission. And I, the best way to do that is to make it fun and interactive. Well, the facility out there is really fascinating, what, what I saw. Um, there was some really cool stuff. Yeah, and we've brought in people from all across the world. We've brought millions of dollars into the economy. Uh, you know, this is just going to further continue St. John's County as the number one. You know, we're known worldwide as one of the best mosquito control districts. Uh, we're the highest cited program in the entire world. And so we're just going to continue getting uh, the education out, letting people know, because the, the smarter people are about mosquito control, the less pesticides we use, the less money we have to pay for pesticides. So it really saves everyone in the end if we're all very vigilant on growing our own problems. And you all are in your new facilities is out off of um, 16, off the um, agricultural yes, drive. Yes, right next to the EOC Okay, um, in the new um, Sheriff's Training Center off of I-95 and um, State Road 16. It's and on EOC Drive. And tell us again that website. So if I want to find out about getting service to my house. Uh, amcdsjc.org. Amcdsjc.org. Okay. And I'm going to get a free visit by the mosquito folks. They're going to come and show me what I can be doing in my yard <laughs> or not doing in my yard. <laughs> That's the whole reason I'm sitting here is because my technician was so fascinating. And, and my little son gets a... Uh, huge welts when he gets a mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. And so if it wasn't for the awesome technician that came and really got me interested in knowing and learning more about it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So it's his fault, you know. And you're very passionate <laughs> about it as our, as our Trish the Commission. Well, I love mom, that. I love it. I want, I want everyone to be able to enjoy the outdoors. So when you're outside, if you're outside at sunset or um, sunrise, wear long sleeves, wear a deep mosquito spray and keep yourself safe because you don't want to live with any kind of illnesses for the rest of your life. From those from nasty, a little bug. nasty, pesky from mosquitoes. From a mom. You know us moms. We'll yep. do anything to feed our kids. That's and right. So. 
Well, and like we said, teasingly, as we started this, there there are some population controls that we cannot impact, but we can impact the population control of our mosquitoes. So, well, thank you both for coming, and we'll have you come back. Oh, thanks, thanks for having, having us. <laughs> If you missed part of this broadcast and want to check back and listen from the beginning, check us out on our website at citystanogradio.com. As we wrap up another edition of The Break Room, I hope we answered your questions. If not, take a minute and send an email to info at citystanog.com. We want to keep you informed about what's happening in and around the city, and most importantly, that you hear it from the people doing the work and making it happen every day. Remember that in order to stay connected, you need to be connected. So be sure to like and follow the city on any of our social media platforms. You'll see us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City St. Og. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program addressing projects and programs offered by the city of St. Augustine. Join us each week as the city's communications director, Melissa Whistle, has in-depth conversations with the people who make our town work to meet the needs of our community. The Break Room is produced by communication specialist for the city of St. Augustine, Cindy Walker, an engineer by Flagler College communication major, Anne-Marie Gresham. See you at this time next week for another edition of The Break Room.